Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company. If you served in the military, the Alaska VA welcomes you home and thanks you for your service. You may be eligible for VA health care benefits, including reimbursement for your care at 26 tribal health facilities and their more than 180 outlying clinics throughout the state of Alaska. Apply online in less than five minutes. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. At uh, 629 this evening, uh, we will hit the autumnal equinox, at uh, which time the summer ends, fall begins. So tomorrow will be the first day, or the first full day of uh, fall. And uh, a nice uh, graph here really simply simplifies it all. You can tell in the uh, Winter, December, the winter solstice, that's when the days are shortest in the northern hemisphere, longest in the southern hemisphere. And then in the summer, just the opposite. Uh, Alaska days are a lot longer than down south, and everything is equal, both in March and September. And for satellite imagery here, you can see we had the storm of yesterday that came up the uh, southeast coast, and last night has pushed all the way up into northwest Canada, and the front uh, edging eastward a little bit slower. And this uh, mass of clouds right through here is uh, the upper level trough that came through the interior and across uh, weekly across South Central Alaska yesterday. And that's extending down into the Gulf of Alaska today. So to the east of that, southwest flow here. And uh, cooler air aloft, pretty unstable. This area of showers, actually thunderstorms in there came on from about the uh, Sitka area, a couple of batches uh, right in here for a while this afternoon, producing some uh, moderate to heavy rain showers at times. And also up here around Yakutat, uh, had a few thunderstorms as well. And the southwest flow uh, actually grabbing onto some of this moisture of the next storm down to the south and pulling it on up. But uh, it doesn't look like too much of that will uh, get up to the southeast coast uh, tonight anyway, but uh, then some more moisture will come up from the southeast. Lots of clear skies here across uh, southern Alaska. Once you get west of uh, Cordova Valdez, it uh, really clears out nicely with the clouds extending northward. Uh, Northway picked up uh, two tenths of an inch of precipitation in the last 24 hours, but uh, Yakutat, one of the heavier amounts, uh, 1.79 inches and uh, about 3,200s at Juneau. No rain all the way back out to the eastern Aleutians here. We have this system coming in from the northwest, bringing uh, gusty winds, rain sliding up ahead of it, the uh, cold front there, and then the winds coming back around, that's where they're the strongest from the northwest, uh, 30 to 40 miles an hour in gusts. Uh, Kivalina reported a gust of 35 miles an hour, and uh, Cape Lisbon had a gust of 40 miles an hour. And to the south here, they're mostly west-southwest, 10 to 20 this afternoon, but uh, really light down here, just some variable cloudiness. In fact, actually that lifting out the sunshine this afternoon but some clouds slipping into the Yukon Delta here uh, as that uh, moisture up to the north uh, slips on down. But you can see uh, St. Paul right on the edge of the clouds there. And we have a large area of low pressure out here, which is a little more active than I thought it was going to be. This batch of clouds right here carried thunderstorms in across Amchitka Island, and they seem to have dissipated this afternoon. So you'll probably see some thunderstorms roll, or some showers roll into ADAC but uh, probably won't see any thunder or lightning with those. And uh, moving, watching this again, you can see the uh, pattern up here, west-northwest flow with the northern branch of the jet stream pushing this moisture down into the northern Bering Sea. Uh, winds about uh, 15 to 30 miles an hour across St. Uh, Lawrence Island. 
and that linking up with this moisture out over the Bering Sea, but the uh, main push will be off to the east, and uh, so the wind's a little bit there, and the uh, precipitation will be pushing eastward as well. But for today, you can see high pressure ridged in from the southeast bearing up into the interior, producing the uh, quite nice weather all the way up into the uh, Eastern Brooks Range there. And then this area showers slowly edging eastward with the upper level trough right through here. Again, southwest flow brought some showers and thunderstorms in along the panhandle today. And uh, early on, gale force winds through Lynn Canal gusting as high as 40, 45 miles an hour, those diminishing and under high pressure, the showers a lot uh, less, uh, a lot more scattered with uh, a little more sunshine down over the southern southeast coast. And uh, this area of cloud showers should stay mostly to the east of Kodiak Island. And for tonight, uh, just some clouds out there, lose the showers altogether. Uh, fair conditions, Bristol Bay, light winds, same thing for the Alaska Peninsula, light winds, fair right up into the eastern interior. A few lingering showers possibly really widely scattered, isolated here along the eastern Alaska range down to the North Gulf Coast. Still uh, remnants of a trough here, bringing a risk of some showers over the northern panhandle, but uh, fair down here over the southern areas, but this area of moisture is trying to push northward. Uh, probably won't happen until tomorrow. Meanwhile, this front moving across the North Slope Brooks Range and then uh, dragging out to the southwest there with the uh, main flow aloft again from west to east. Uh, there won't be much of a southern push to this front at all from the position right at about this latitude. A couple of weak troughs coming out of that low over the western bearing. We'll bring a few showers into the uh, Perloff Islands and uh, some of that moisture could reach the eastern Aleutians. More extensive though out to, to the west. And then looking at tomorrow again, the front now reaching the eastern Arctic coast probably sometime during the afternoon hours. So the windiest conditions will be following that in uh, possible gale force winds with this low in gusts. There's a uh, moves along the central to the eastern Arctic coast. Definitely lighter winds with high pressure building into the uh, northwest behind it. Uh, still some snow showers scattered around, maybe some flurries, but uh, most of the moisture pushing off to the east and then some a narrow area of precipitation along that frontal boundary there, uh, mostly of rain in the central interior, really uh, scatters out here along the Yukon Delta coast, uh, very weak low out over the Bering Sea, and then those troughs uh, gradually trying to move eastward. Actually, some of this will slip on up uh, on Wednesday, Tuesday night and Wednesday here up to the coastline, but not much change. Uh, winds uh, 15 to 20, maybe some gusts of 25 miles an hour at times over the Aleutians for the next couple of days, but Bristol Bay remaining dry. Really the Alaska Peninsula as well, just a few clouds there, light winds, very light winds. Kodiak Island, same forecast, more sunshine uh, tomorrow and staying mostly dry across the Copper River Basin, just a few clouds. And still looks uh, pretty good here over most of the southeast coast with this big storm there just uh, on the edge of the map, a lot of moisture streaming northward. Still will bring a chance of rain into the southern areas, more than likely uh, staying down over Dixon entrance there. And then this stuff will be sliding off to the south, southeast, high pressure in over northwest Canada. And the next one here over the uh, Russian Far East, that's going to uh, kind of come up over and wham on Wednesday with more gusty winds, uh, snow, rain, and that'll be moving right along there. So. Uh, timing's a little iffy on that as it tracks eastward, but definitely will be coming across as the uh, upper flow pretty much holding stationary, stuck in the pattern there. This uh, storm down to the south, that'll be spreading rain northward with uh, rain changing to showers, but it looks like a lot of clouds, showers, uh, chance of rain pushing northward here. Uh, less chance, say, at Haines over to Yakutat remaining dry. In fact, west of Yakutat, a lot of sunshine here. Offshore flow with the uh, lower pressure down to the southeast, high pressure over the interior. Uh, looks pretty good for a lot of sunshine here south of the Alaska Range, both east and south of the mountains. Copper River Basin right down to the North Gulf Coast. Uh, Kodiak Island, more sunshine, mostly sunny Bristol Bay. Again, some of those troughs are remnant moisture. I've probably spread some uh, light rain possibilities, clouds, uh, maybe lower flying conditions into the southwest coast here. Otherwise, high pressure keeping this system off to the north and moving eastward. And uh, kind of a regeneration of a frontal boundary out here with this system, bring chance of rain across Atka probably Tuesday night, and then that'll try to push into uh, the eastern Aleutians on Wednesday. But a bigger storm down to the south is gonna kind of uh, 
draw most of the moisture from that. So uh, pretty nice winds continuing on the light side out here and it'll be strong as again increasing with that system approaching or as it rolls into the uh, Arctic coast, especially on the west side there. And then those winds will be tracking eastward to the uh, east side during the day and afternoon, probably evening Wednesday. And for temperatures today, uh, 50s here over the Panhandle, uh, 59 Wrangell down at uh, Klawak, 10 degrees cooler up at Yakutat, mid 50s Prince William Sound, the North Gulf Coast, uh, 39 at Gulcana, and some upper 30s here over the eastern Tanana Valley. 44 though at Fairbanks, uh, lower to mid 50s South Central Alaska, Valdez at 55, same thing at Cordova, 54 Homer and Kodiak, and uh, lower 40s, a uh, little cooler back to the north, but uh, upper 30s, uh, Koyukuk Valley, Anatuvik, uh, 32 coming up from there, low of 16 this morning, 37 over at Arctic Village, and mid 30s east side of the Arctic coast, uh, Lower 30s there for the central coast, the upper 30s back to the west. Mid 40s, Kotzebue Sound, or at Kotzebue and uh, Selawick with uh, 41 Shishmaref, 47 over at Nome, back down to 41 there with the gusty winds, clouds over at uh, Savunga and Gamble, and generally 40s here until you reach the coast and it pushes up into the lower 50s, and then on out to the Aleutians, 50 to 55 about sums it up uh, for the Perbloffs and all of the Aleutians right up to the Alaska Peninsula here, 50 degrees at King Salmon. Lows tonight, uh, mid 40s for the Panhandle, mid to upper 40s, and then uh, kind of cool here, many places dropping into the 20s, but uh, staying in the mid 30s back out toward the uh, coastline. In fact, even 40s here, St. Lawrence Island down to uh, Makoriak, mid 40s for the Perbloffs and the Aleutians, upper 20s uh, to lower 30s for the uh, North Slope. And for highs tomorrow, not too bad. Again, mid 30s here, everybody above freezing into the 40s, upper 40s, lower 50s, warmest down here over Bristol Bay, looking really good. Uh, warmer yet here over the southeast coast, lower 60s over the central and southern areas. And for flying weather, as that uh, front pushes in, we'll have an area of marginal to possible IFR with it, and then breaking out to uh, better conditions back behind. But the uh, north slope from the Brooks Range northward, that's where we'll see more extensive area of IFR and marginal VFR, and then out over the Bering Sea, lots of clouds, areas of marginal and uh, IFR there. Uh, VFR here, southwest coast, Kodiak Island, much of the Alaska Peninsula, except right on the north side there, and it'll extend up uh, this area of marginal VFR, possible leftover moisture there, Prince William Sound, uh, right up into Passage Canal, but uh, VFR, much of the southeast coast, this will be creeping northward throughout the day tomorrow. And for passes, Anatovic IFR becoming marginal, and for Adigan, kind of an IFR, lowest conditions possibly on the northern entrance, but uh, expect IFR at times. Lake Clark and Merrill, though, VFR, uh, good conditions for rainy as well. Windy, VFR through much of the day. Uh, marginal VFR will be threatening the north entrance there late in the afternoon, but I think it'll stay VFR the entire day. Isabel, VFR both sides, and then Tasta, VFR as well. Tanita, VFR, and Portage. Uh, again, that moisture I spoke of there in the Gulf or Prince William Sound, looks like the east side uh, possibly could be IFR. Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR improving, or improving to VFR. And the freezing levels here, uh, again, the cold air coming in behind that front as it moves eastward, kind of a little bit of a warm up in advance of it, but uh, this tomorrow morning's freezing levels uh, at the surface right across the Bering Strait, you can see the warm push of air pushing it into the interior, then cooler down to the south with uh, six to 8,000 foot levels here down across the Panhandle, really uh, 4,000 feet about sums it up for much of the Bering Sea until you get up here into the northern areas. And for icing threats, uh, we'll see above 2,000 feet here with the lower freezing levels, just scattered areas of really nothing that significant, possibly up here where there's more moisture with that system moving eastward, and then some possible out here over the Bering Sea. Otherwise, a huge area down here south of the Aleutians, maybe getting this far north tomorrow afternoon or by tomorrow evening, but the remainder of the southeast coast on into the Copper River Basin, southern Alaska looking really good. And uh, the winds aloft, we've got two branches of the jet here, high pressure aloft over eastern Russia as uh, another trough swings eastward across the northern part of the state, 55 knot winds. And uh, the 70 knot wind now exiting the panhandle tomorrow, the main low now down to the south with the Pacific jet. 
and then another trough back farther to the west that'll be rolling across uh, for another system that we've reserved for uh, Wednesday. And 9,000 feet tomorrow, uh, strong flow west, northwest, 20 to 30 knots into the interior, lighter down to the south, of course under high pressure, about 10 knots there, Bristol Bay, uh, looking really good there. And kind of a reverse flow, light westerlies over the northern southeast coast, up to 20 knots over the eastern Alaska range, easterlies 20, uh, advancing northward toward the southern panhandle, and kind of a broad southwest flow out here to the west, 20 to 25 knots, takes a turn to the east, into the interior, but only at about 15. A little more interesting here at 3,000 feet. Uh, in advance of that frontal boundary, southwest winds at about 30 knots here from the uh, northern Alaska or northwestern Alaska range right up uh, across the Eagle, Fort Yukon area, and even pretty brisk over the eastern Arctic coast. And that extends back to the western areas, and then it diminishes here along the coast with high pressure, southwest 30 for the highest winds out over the Aleutians and the Bering Sea. So turbulence wise with that, uh, look for an area of moderate chop, uh, 4,000 to 6,000 feet there with those stronger winds in advance of the front, which will be kind of stalling out right through here. And then with the stronger low center up along the Arctic coast, otherwise pretty smooth. Bering Sea, southern areas, turbulence trying to creep northward across the Dixon entrance tomorrow. And then that uh, system out over the central Aleutians. And after the break, I'll be back to look at the marine forecasts. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor, and I'm Secretary of the Board of Directors of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation. And in my day job, I manage the Aviation Safety Program at the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. This evening, we are honored to have on our show, Ms. Amy Moore. She's a very well-rounded pilot uh, with a great resume with all different types of flying. Amy has also been recently hired as a pilot with an airline in Alaska. Amy, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Mary. Can you start by telling us a little bit about what got you interested in being a pilot? Well, I grew up in Alaska. My dad had a plane when I was growing up, and my worldview was all adults had a pilot's license. And so when I was about 23, I started flight training, and later on determined that chasing the almighty dollar was not what it was about, and moved back to Alaska to build my flight time and head for the airlines. So what types of aviation jobs did you have that led up to you being an airline pilot? Oh, it was a long road, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first flying I did was with Civil Air Patrol, and that was a fantastic time of learning about Alaska and the weather and the equipment. I did some flight scene tours. I ended up out in Nome as director of operations for an air taxi. And I did some helicopter flying along the way and eventually got on with my first uh, regional carrier. So you did some pretty cool flying in Nome. Nome was interesting. Nome was very challenging. Um, we actually had two certificates, one that had scheduled service and we hauled mail and freight, and another one that had more of the off-airport activities, which was the reindeer herding and helicopters, hauling hunters and miners and other activities. So it was a great way to see part of the state and have some really exciting experiences. So you have a helicopter rating, correct? I do. I actually have a um, ATP in the helicopter as well as a single engine ATP and a multi-engine ATP. Wow. How do you think that flying in a helicopter has made you a better fixed wing pilot or has it? Oh, absolutely. Um, as I was learning the helicopter, and particularly um, in the winter and the spring flying, where you have really rapidly changing weather, what I found with the helicopter is it's so versatile that um, when things get a little bit tough or when it starts to get marginal when the weather's on its way down, the helicopter, you can do a 180 real quickly and get out of there. You can stop. You can wait. And so with the helicopter, it made me a lot more cautious in the airplane that I realized I didn't have the same options that the helicopter afforded me. So would you say that flying a helicopter is more fun or more challenging? Uh, it's absolutely both. It's so much more fun in that the ability, the places you can go, the places you can just, if you see something, you just stop and take a look at it. Whereas an airplane, you really have to plan that out. 
Um, you have to have a spot that you can land. You have to, you know, an airstrip or a sandbar. In a helicopter course, you need a lot less space to be able to do some of the um, landings or survey very interesting spots. The airplane, of course, you can see a whole lot more territory. You can go a lot further because of the speeds that are involved. But in terms of just enjoyment, I, I definitely prefer the helicopter. So do you have a favorite type of aircraft? I think my all-time favorite is the Beaver. I think that radial engine. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like that noise, is there? <laughs> yeah, it's just it's not noise, it's music. <laughs> That'd be my first, and then almost any helicopter after that. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Amy. It's been a real pleasure having you on our show, and we look forward to talking with you some more on our next show. Thank you, Mary. This program is sponsored by the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation. If you enjoy the program, I encourage you to attend our Fall Safety Seminar, which is going to be held this year on Saturday, November 15th at the Assembly Chambers at the LUSAC Library here in Anchorage. Our theme is Winter is Coming, and we'll be featuring some weather information and some scenarios that might help you with your winter flying. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, remember to always file a flight plan and fly safely. Welcome back. Uh, sea ice today, uh, still about 120 nautical miles due north of uh, Point Barrow, which it's more or less been for the last uh, week or so. And then uh, notice this area up here beginning to ice up, which is about where you'd expect it to begin up there, but uh, roughly about the same here north of the Arctic coast. And for uh, marine forecast tomorrow, northeast winds uh, just about everywhere here are a general offshore component to the winds. In the 15 to 20 knot range, a little lighter back up here to the northwest, and could see some winds 20 knots or less from the north for Lynn Canal Glacier Bay. And then for uh, Wednesday, uh, northeast or east becoming northeast, uh, by the afternoon could kick up to 20, 22 knots, depending on how far north and how strong uh, those bands uh, or the frontal boundary is when it pushes on up. And then Northeast 10 to 15 over the inside waters. No change for Lynn Canal, lighter winds on the north coast. Back to the west, Prince William Sound, light variable winds. That'll extend uh, up into northern Cook Inlet and then just uh, light breezes on down to the southwest in Kamishak Bay. Northwest, uh, 15 knots or 15 to 20 knots here for the Barren Islands. And I believe it's uh, Tuesday night. They've got small craft advisories in for that marine zone. Westerlies back across the Shelikoff Strait, light northerlies for Kodiak Island on the east side. And for the uh, Wednesday forecast, a little brisker here, north uh, east that begin Friday or Tuesday night, continue through Wednesday at 25 knots, lighter back toward Augustine Island, about the same down through Shelikoff Strait. 20 knot winds or 15 to 20 knot winds, higher gusts down here towards Sitkanak possible, and then northwest 20 for the North Gulf Coast. And uh, go north 10, keeping it light in Prince William Sound, but give it a direction. Out toward Bristol Bay, northwest at 10. Very light winds here for the Alaska Peninsula, under just about an axis of high pressure, so very little gradient, uh, just variable, light and variable would cover it to north at about 10, uh, southwest of Sitkanak to Chignik. And then for Wednesday, again, high pressure right over the area here, light variable winds at 10 knots, northwest. 10 to 15 here from Bristol Bay on down to the southeast. Now late in the day, these winds here on the western side of those zones will turn south to southeast, but shouldn't pick up to more than 10 to 12 knots. And for the uh, Aleutians tomorrow, south-southwest 15, west of ADAC. And for the central areas here, 15 to 20 knots from a more southerly direction. And then southwest 5 to 10 for the Fox Islands. And they'll swing around to the southeast and just increase a little bit, nothing significant, 10 to 15 knots here, 15 to 20 knots from the south, and then back to the west, westerlies to southwest, or, or what, no, northwest to west at about 20. And for the southwest coast, really light winds tomorrow from the southwest, 5 to 10 knots. Uh, the highest speed here is probably too high, 15 knots there for St. Lawrence Island, more likely 10 knots out of the east. And 
really light south to southeast uh, winds all the way down to the Pribilofs. Then for Wednesday, again, a high pressure area right over the uh, southwest coast, um, five to 10 knots, variable directions, really laid down, could be dead calm. And then that ridge axis shifting eastward, winds become south at 10, southeast, maybe up to 15 knots there. That'll be the windiest area for the Pribilofs. And then tomorrow we've got that uh, storm system rolling eastward just north of the Arctic coast. So it could be some gale or gale force winds with that, more than likely small craft advisories. Winds beginning to diminish back here to the west, to some lower values. And then on Wednesday, another storm rolling in. So uh, small craft advisories here along the Bering Strait all the way up to the western Arctic coast. Uh, dropping back to 20 knots, uh, depending on how far north that low center is. If it's a little farther south, you'll drop down, but uh, it could carry small craft advisories the entire day Wednesday. And southwesterlies, 25 to 30 knots for the east side. Looking at tonight again, we've got uh, the first system, or another system, moving eastward there. So gusty winds, snow showers, areas of snow. Could be up to one to two inches, especially on the upslope areas of the Brooks Range here. And that pushing eastward, fair down to the south. Uh, lingering showers, but nothing significant here or the southeast interior drier for the southeast coast and uh, some weak troughs pushing across the Bering Sea which uh, really are even weaker here for tomorrow. A little bit uh, more action here in the way of moisture out over the western areas. The front moving eastward but kind of stalling out through here. High pressure drying it out over uh, back to the northwest there but a few showers, snow showers here over the western north slope. This system spreading rain up mostly uh, tomorrow night and into Wednesday for the Panhandle. Have a great evening. Thanks for joining. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan.